the headline writers are saying it's the Chipotle turnaround. Do you feel like the turnaround is, is there? Well, look, we're definitely just getting started. People have asked me, where do you think you are in the turnaround? I, I would say we're just in the early yeah. innings. Um, you know, there's still so much opportunity in front of us, and there's still a lot of work to be done uh, on just the basics of running great restaurants, um, you know, I think really becoming a digital leader right. and just becoming more visible with the purpose of Chipotle around real food, real ingredients. So early innings, it's, it's nice to see uh, the positive feedback from our customers in the sales. Right. And then it's also nice to get the uh, positive feedback in the headlines. And, and the sales growth, not just from raising prices. I mean, the sales no. growth traffic is up and that's a really important metric. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I mean by, you know, the initiatives that we've put in place are, you know, we're starting to see a nice response from our customers right. uh, with the traffic growth. You know, Chipotle is a tremendous value. Um, and when we do the food uh, the way we know how to do the food, which is really delicious with real ingredients, and then we do it in a way where it's really fast, mm -hmm. customized, I, I, you know, I think we're the best value proposition out there for consumers when it comes to Food. It's a restaurant company. It's a tech company, though, too. When you look at the digital initiatives and the multi-year digital initiatives, talk to me a little bit about the technology and how that is going to, I guess, change the restaurant business as you guys do it. Look, we are definitely under a digital transformation at Chipotle. We are uh, creating access through all these mobile applications and then obviously the website. Uh, but the big unlock for us actually is in the restaurant, digitizing the restaurant, because we have a second uh, line mm -hmm. where we've now put up all the digital capability there. So when you order in the app, it doesn't interact with the front line where right. consumers coming into the restaurant are. And it's just increased the speed, it's increased the accuracy, and it's also increased our opportunities for additional forms of access, whether it's delivery. We talked about an earnings call, right. we're testing a new Chipotle lane where people can literally just drive up, grab their food and go. So I think we're gonna just give people more ways to interact with Chipotle with a lot less friction. I mean, you used to be a Taco Bell and Taco Bell sort of is the, I would say the king of, of the drive-through. Like I never eat in a Taco Bell, I go through the drive. But this is different, the Chipotle is different because it's not like driving up and you're looking at a board and you're trying to decide you're talking to a person. Correct, this is uh, just taking our you know, your off-premise order and giving you access where you don't have to get out of your car. This is literally, you order ahead in the app, you select your pickup time, and when you get to uh, our restaurant, you know, you'll see your name usually on a board, and then you can come around and uh, You've tested it, and it worked well where you tested it. We've got it in 10 restaurants right now, and uh, it's going really well. Uh, so our digital business is up dramatically, right. and the good news is it's also incremental, so the total business is up. And in every store will you have, in every restaurant, will you have the, that second assembly line for, for digital orders? Is that the goal? Every restaurant already has the second make line. We are just putting in the digital capability. Right. So we'll always have the second make line. And then the other key piece of the puzzle is when you walk into the restaurant, right. there's an area for you to pick up your digital orders whether it's the delivery driver coming in to grab the food and go or whether it's you a customer coming in to get the food. What's been the reception to the, the new menu items specifically for the, the bowls for dieters? Yeah, it's been great. You know, uh, we were pleasantly surprised with uh, the positive response to the lifestyle yeah. bowls. You know, we had tested them in our stage gate process and we saw a positive response. But uh, I think the timing was right. Um, those are the right uh, diets that people right. want to, uh, you know, use in their lifestyle today. And I don't think people realized they could have such great food and right. still follow, you know, that keto diet or right. the Whole30 diet. Uh, so it's been really positive. You know, personally, I've even adopted the keto bowl. Really? So, uh, yeah, it's good to put into your repertoire, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, you talked to analysts this week about um, your biggest concern, which is labor costs. 20 states this year are going to raise their minimum wages. We've already seen wages rising because of that. Talk to me about that. The cost of labor is going up, and w the way we think about it is, we need to make sure we're recruiting and retaining the right people right. Uh, because you know the cost of turnover is just going up and you know at chipotle we have no problem attracting people fortunately for us people really love the brand right. they love the purpose a lot of our employees come from being a customer right. and uh, i think the goal for us going forward is how do we minimize the turnover in these restaurant teams and that's what we're really focused on. I was just telling somebody the other day, I was in a restaurant and uh, the young lady I go up to, I was like, how long have you been at Chipotle? And she's like, this is my first day. I was like, oh, that's great. And she's like, oh, and by the way, it's my first job. Wow. Uh, and I was like, well, that, that's terrific too. I'm glad you chose us right. for your first job. You know, the thing when we got done meeting with her though, is like, boy, I really hope she's there two or three years later right. and becomes a restaurant manager. And right. if she stays with us beyond that, she could be a 
you know, field leader, where now you're running eight restaurants. So how do you retain that talent then? Well, it, it requires a great culture yeah. in the restaurant, and it requires having a great restaurant manager right. uh, leading the restaurant that develops that young lady. You know, the reason people usually leave is they feel like they're not competent in the job, so they get frustrated and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm not very good at this, mm -hmm. or they don't believe they've got a culture where people care about them. So we need to get both, and we're really focusing this year, and we're talking about how we make this the year of the restaurant manager right. so that we give them the tools so when we attract these people into our company, how do we let them understand we can grow you, develop you, give you skills, great career opportunities, and for some people change their lives dramatically. If you have to pay them more for, to, keep, to retain these uh, workers, you have to pass that along in the, rest, in, the, in the menu? You know, luckily for us, we're already providing some of the best in class benefits, right. uh, higher wages relative to a lot of our peers. Um, that's not been our problem. Um, you know, we've got, I think, the right package for people to want to be a part of Chipotle. Our challenge, frankly, is making sure the culture comes to life and the career growth comes to life for them so that they don't decide to make a move. Do you have any concerns about labor shortages? It's when I talk to retail executives, um, they are worried actually about labor shortages, about being able to find workers. We're always worried about finding great people. Mm -hmm. um, the good news is because I think our brand has a unique purpose, this idea of cultivating a better world. We do real cooking, real ingredients. Yeah people are attracted to the brand, but it's always top of mind. You know, any organization, if you're not worried about attracting top talent and retaining top talent at all levels, you're probably not worried about the right thing. You know, any corporation is only as good as the people you're able to attract. So it's always top of mind. Uh, it's one of the top things I'm yeah. always concerned with. Like, yeah. are we doing the right things to attract the right people and then retain the right people? Um, also on the subject of, I guess, of, of labor, you know, you've got these concerns in the ag industry. You source fresh and local. People concerned about not having talent on the farms, too. Yeah. Uh, is there an immigration policy angle to this that needs to be addressed, do you think, for the, for the labor story? For us, what we've really committed to is we want to support local farmers. Right. The big issue we're seeing is the next generation isn't interested in the in the business. So a lot of them are choosing not to stay in the family business and move into something else. And I think some of it is because just so much of, you know, farming has moved to big yeah. corporations as yeah. opposed to, you know, the family business that it once was. The way we're trying to help support the local farmer is we, we want to give them the opportunity to be a supplier to a company like Chipotle where we've got the scale, we could hopefully convince then the next generation, you want to stay in this business versus right. selling off, you know, the, the proposition to whoever else or the further consolidation. Did you see that Costco plan to start its own uh, I did. poultry plant so that it would, could, could get out of the, out of the business of, you I know, did. the American chicken system? They're, they're an impressive company. Yeah. yeah. Um, you've been doing this a year now, almost, right? In March, I think, you got yes. this job. Yeah. So biggest surprise. One of the biggest surprises for me, frankly, was just how much people truly love the brand Chipotle. Yeah. When, you, when you talk to our customers and our team members, the level of passion behind the purpose of the company is unbelievable and then people really love our food and you talk to them a little bit and you're like man i you know i love this food yeah. I, I i love what that's chipotle's trying to food, do that's why the food safety thing was such a big deal because people felt just so disappointed you feel like that's completely in the rearview mirror look it's uh it's something that you know is unfortunate that happened but the good news is i think it's made the company better mm -hmm. uh and it's also forced us to recognize like look we're very committed to doing real ingredients right. real cooking so we're always going to have to be leading on the food safety right. side of things really the conversation that i think is important for us is to make sure people can have confidence right. in these real ingredients uh, these real cooking experiences and then get you delicious food that otherwise you wouldn't have access right. to. So I think that's that's what we're focused on spending our time now with our customers. A, a year in, talk to me a little bit about the pace of innovation because I feel like covering some of these companies and the way technology is changing, you know, the, the experiences that, that customers have, whether it's in food or in retail, the pace of innovation seems to be getting faster to me. It is, you know, the uh, I think consumer expectations are changing uh, faster than ever. And when you look at one of our key groups that loves Chipotle is this, you know, 18 to 25 year old crowd. And, uh, you know, their attention spans are built from social media. And that's why I think it's important for us to show up in the places where they are consuming media. And you guys uh, did a Fortnite tie in last year, I think, didn't you? We did. And it's also just, we've really, I think, revolutionized 
the way Chipotle is communicated through our social, mobile, digital channels. Well, I saw Adam Levine's tattoos were reflecting the Chipotle bag, right? <laughs> you got it right in the Super Bowl halftime yeah, show. Yeah, we, we, that was not planned. <laughs> uh, but, did yeah. you see those memes? You must have seen I, those I did memes. see those memes. Uh, my, my daughter pointed it out to me right away as we were watching the Super Bowl. Uh, but you have to have innovation happening all the time. You know, and I think sometimes people think innovation means like, oh, what is this next new big product? It actually needs to be happening all the time throughout our business. And it can be, you know, uh, little things uh, that show up in, mm -hmm. you know, social, or it could be big things like, you know, we're working on doing a new quesadilla um, or the new advertising that's going to be coming out um, on Monday, mm -hmm. um, new restaurant design. So, you know, you see innovation at big levels, but we're trying to create a culture at Chipotle where, look, we want creativity, innovation to be happening all the time. And then we need to be accountable for learning based on what this innovation teaches us, the good and the bad. One year into this job, what keeps you up at night? Look, uh, there are so many growth opportunities in front of us. We have to make sure we stay focused on executing what needs to happen right now. I, I, I would really love for this company to continue to build from strength to strength to strength. You know, right now our big focus is our digital system getting out there, uh, getting the communication out there again that Chipotle stands for real ingredients, real cooking. And then our operations, um, you know, we've done a nice job, I think, of getting back to great food consistently. Mm -hmm. And now we're focused on doing it faster. You know, if we do those things, that sets a strong foundation for what we've got in the pipeline for innovation, whether it's new food like the quesadilla or new programs like our loyalty program. Uh, you got to have a strong foundation so that when you move to those things. We haven't talked about that loyalty program yet. So what is that? So that's like if I buy 10 burritos, the 11th is free. Is that what it's going to look like? Well, it's a point system. Mm -hmm. So uh, based on the dollars that you spend, you accrue points, and then ultimately you'll be able to use those points for rewards. And how have you found people are using them? Are they keeping the cash value on there? Or it's funny. They, yeah, it's interesting to see how pe people like to have, um, you know, a, a yeah. nest egg of Chipotle yeah. points for sure. <laughs> Uh, as we've tested this yeah. and you know what's also been interesting is to see how people want to use their points it isn't necessarily always to redeem a burrito sometimes it's like well today I just want to add chips and guac right because I don't want to use up all my points so I'll just go with the chips and guac and not use it to redeem a full entree or you know we'll give some incentives where if you come you know on a Thursday you get double points uh, people really react in a positive way to that. So Interesting. Uh, one last question. I want to go back to the labor issue because you are trying some new scheduling tricks, right? You're, you have some new ways that you're going to be scheduling people to try to manage the, the, the higher labor costs. Can you tell me about that a little bit? Well, it's, it's not necessarily in regard to the higher labor costs. Yeah. It's the, the way we're thinking about scheduling now is right. just giving people uh, an opportunity to focus in their respective areas. So we, we have this effort called Focus Prep. So if you're a person that's going to be part of our prep team, the good news is when you come into the restaurant, your responsibility is going to be, you know, cut the avocados, yeah. mash the guac, you know, cut the onions, the peppers, um, you know, prepare all of the uh, food for the day right. versus somebody that's going to be working on the grill. You know, they're going to be focused on ch cooking the chicken, marinating the steak, and they'll be focused on the grill procedures. And then we have a person that'll be focused on the dining room. Before it wasn't as clear your roles and responsibilities in that division of labor. Got it. So what we want to do is just make sure people are making great food. They have respective responsibilities, and then it just makes the restaurant run a lot better. And frankly, it makes the job a lot better because right. the person coming in knows what they're going to be doing that right. day. And they know what success looks like. Right. They, they know success is today a clean dining room. Success for this individual is great chicken off the grill. Success for this individual is world-class guacamole. Right. Um, and we've seen that just be a really powerful tool because what it does, too, is our general manager then is able to actually play at a level of coaching and getting the team ready to have a great experience for the customers coming in. So that's what we're working on. And then obviously we're adopting additional technology to help people get right. that scheduled correctly so people get the shifts they want and they can get the hours that they right. want. Are there any plans for breakfast? Uh, you know, uh, we, we have breakfast in one restaurant in uh, the Washington Dulles Airport, uh, and it's fabulous. It, our chorizo with eggs, it's terrific. But uh, right now, we're focused on right. getting after our lunch business, our dinner business, and that business in between. Our food would be great at breakfast. Uh, we just need to get the core operation back to where it was before um, we, we add in something complex like yep. breakfast. Mm -hmm.